Hi, I'm Tony Wagner, co-director of the Change Leadership Group at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. But more importantly, I spend time in schools and in school districts virtually every single week and have for several decades. So I speak to you now as school board members and as leaders in your community about the challenges that we face in education. Because what I've come to understand at the, that even our best schools and school districts, the ones that are the highest performing, and I know Iowa has long enjoyed a reputation as one of the best states in the country from an educational point of view, but here's the challenge. Even these schools and districts are not meeting the challenge of the global knowledge economy in the 21st century. First and foremost, do you know that according to the data that I've seen, Iowa is only graduating about eight out of 10 kids. Do you know your real cohort graduation rate in your district? Do you know how many students are graduating career, college, and citizenship ready for the 21st century? Do you know how many students are going on to some form of post-secondary and succeeding there? Because nationally, we know that one out of every two students who starts college never completes any degree at all. And those students are simply not going to have a future in this global knowledge economy. The days in which students can drop out of high school or have a high school diploma and expect to earn a good living are over. We're in a global competition in the 21st century. And globally, frankly, we're doing miserably, even our very best schools. We're now no longer number one in college completion. And on the international assessment called PISA, P-I-S-A, Program for International Student Assessment. In recent years, in math, for example, we were 39th out of 56 countries. In science, we were 35th out of 56 countries. And the answer is not more teaching to the test. In fact, what I've come to understand in my research is that's part of the problem. Because our tests, the Iowa Test of Basic Skills and others, do not test the skills that matter most in the global knowledge economy. The ITBS does not test critical thinking skills. The ITBS does not test students' abilities to write an extended essay or do a research paper, which, by the way, are the kinds of assessments the best European countries that are consistently outperforming us are using. And that's why they're getting better PISA results, because the PISA test is not a test of memorization. It's not a multiple choice test. It's a test of thinking skills. And that's where we're falling down. So here are some things I'd like to encourage you to consider. First and foremost, be, begin to study as a community, as a board, how this world has changed and what that means for the skills that our young people are going to need. Talk to your business leaders. You know, we had the pleasure of having a senior executive from Pella join us just here in conversations yesterday. And we came to understand, as he told us, that a kid can come in the door with a good GPA and that means nothing to them because just because they have a reasonable grade average doesn't mean they have the skills that Pella needs for these young people to be able to contribute to their company and to their company's growth. So be clear first and foremost about the skills that matter most. I talk about the seven survival skills in my book, The Global Achievement Gap. That may be a useful resource to you. A number of boards are using it as a book study. But it doesn't matter. More importantly, than any book is the conversations you need to have with your community, you need to have with your business and community leaders, and have them tell you the skills that matter and the ways in which they find young people coming through our schools ill-prepared to meet the challenges of work in the 21st century and citizenship. So beyond that, the next step, I believe, is for your community to have a different level of accountability, to understand that it's not about test scores. It's, a, it's about attainment. So while your students may be passing ITPS, that does not mean that they are going to graduate from high school with the skills they need. So you're going to have to, I think, begin to look at a different kind of data. For example, you can join the National Student Clearinghouse and find out exactly which of your students actually goes to post-secondary of some form and succeeds, completes a degree. You can do interviews and focus groups with your recent graduates and ask them in what ways they were most and least well prepared and videotape those interviews and discuss them with your school and district leaders. So I'm suggesting to you a different set of challenges that are less operational and more strategic. 
should begin to collect the data that matters most for children's lives and for our country's economic future. Then I think we're really going to have to encourage research and development. Many of you know that there is no innovation without R&D. But when I ask superintendents, well, what's your R&D budget? They laugh in my face because they don't have one. None, zero. Microsoft's is 17%. Cisco's is 13%. So we can't have innovation. We can't have meaningful change without creating a research and development capability in our schools and districts. At a modest level, it means setting aside some money for teams of teachers to come together to create new interdisciplinary curricula where they figure out together what is critical thinking? What does it mean? How do we teach it? How do we assess it? At a more ambitious level, what I would like to see is for larger districts or consortia of small districts to come together and create laboratory schools. You've got a few charter schools in the state and elsewhere, I understand that. So I'm not talking about charter schools necessarily or specifically. I am talking about laboratories for innovation where teachers, parents, and students choose to come together into a school where they're consciously and intentionally trying to develop the new curricula, the new forms of assessment, and the better ways to motivate and engage young people to ensure that they've mastered the critical competencies for the 21st century. As you talk to students, one of the things I'd encourage you to explore is the extent to which they really feel challenged and engaged in their learning. You know, this generation is very differently motivated, and we need to understand the ways in which we have to work differently with young people. The kinds of schooling that you and I had that may have been good enough for us don't work for this generation. Not only do they not get the skills they need, but they're not motivated to do their best. They're not challenged. This is a generation that is constantly connected, multitasking in a multimedia universe out of the school. They're spending an average, studies tell us, of about seven and a half hours a day on their electronic devices. Now, they come to school and it's sit and get, and that's not working for them. They're passive, they're bored, they're not challenged, they're bringing home too many worksheets that they just kind of slough their way through while they're talking to friends or texting or whatever. So we have to ensure that those students are motivated and engaged. I would encourage you to, for example, to think about a requirement of that all students have a work-based internship as a part of their academic work, that all students have a service learning project, that students are producing real products for a real audience. I would encourage you to consider that students should have a digital portfolio that follows them through school, where they have to demonstrate mastery of critical thinking and communication skills. So these are just some of the things that I believe you as board members need to engage in conversations around. I understand you have to worry about some operation issues and budgets are critically important in this time, but I ask you please not to get so enmeshed in detail, not to get involved in management, and to really move more towards your strategic role of goal setting and accountability for the 21st century skills that matter most. In this new global knowledge economy, we can't afford to have a single student leave school because that student won't even have the capability of earning minimum wage. We must ensure that all of our students graduate and they graduate career, college, and citizenship ready. And I believe your challenge as community leaders is to really understand what that means and then how best to both hold educators accountable and to support them in this incredibly important work. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. I wish you best of luck in your critically important work.